Hey friends, it's Mel, and welcome to my kitchen. Thank you so much for hanging in this week and coming back for another What's for Dinner. I am feeling so much better, and I want to show you what I made over the last couple weeks while I was sick and not feeling the best. So, if you're interested to see what we had, just grab that sweet tea, sit on back, and let me do the cooking. The first night's meal, I'm going to start you off with a side of pasta salad. And I had about half a box of bow tie pasta in the cabinet and hadn't used up, so I just boiled that up according to the instructions. And then I rinsed it really good in cold water to cool it down. I'm loosely following a recipe for some Amish pasta salad and I'll be sure and leave you the recipe linked down below. And I've just chopped up some sweet onion to put in it. And I did not have any green bell pepper, but I did have a red bell pepper, so I just chopped up a little bit of that to go in it too. I really did not have a meal plan for the last two weeks. I had plenty of things in the cabinets in the pantry so I just kind of winged it and used what I had and what I felt like eating. So here are pasta salads coming together. We have the noodles that are all cooled off and I have put in the onion and the red bell pepper. I've just got a couple of eggs that I hard boiled on top of the stove. Now got them cooling in some cold water. So I'm going to start mixing in the rest of the ingredients and I just put in some mayonnaise and just some regular yellow mustard. I put in just a little bit of sweet pickle relish and I do uh, try to drain as much of the juice off of it as I can. Gonna put in just a little bit of garlic powder I really didn't measure any of this. I just kind of eyeballed it and tasted and went from there. I also added in some paprika. And just some regular old salt and pepper. I put just a little dash of apple cider vinegar in here. And then I finished it off with just a little bit of sugar. And I'm just gonna mix all of that together and let it set and incorporate while I peel and chop up my eggs. I think I have showed you this before, but if not, I found the perfect way for me to make a hard boiled egg is just to cover my eggs in cool water. I put them on top of the stove and I bring them to a rolling boil. As soon as they come to a rolling boil, I turn the heat off. I do leave them on the stove eye and I put a lid on them and I just let them set for 19 minutes. As soon as that 19 minutes is up, I'll just start rinsing them off in cold water and they peel so easy and it's always just the perfect doneness for me for a hard boiled egg. So I'm going to mix those eggs in now and then I'm just going to put this in the refrigerator and let it get nice and cold and marry all those different flavors together. Now I'm just going to make some hamburgers and this is what a friend of mine, Nora, years ago we were camping and she used this mixture to season up hamburgers and I absolutely love it. And that's just a Heinz 57 steak sauce. That's great value brand of that. But that's basically Heinz 57, Worcestershire sauce, and Lowry seasoning salt. I love these flavors in a hamburger. And even when we're doing smash burgers out on the Blackstone, a lot of time I'll season them up with this mixture too. And I always like to double up two or three layers of wax paper when I'm mixing up my hamburger meat. I hate to mix it in a bowl. I just, I don't know. I would just rather be able to throw the paper away, but it does always uh, make for easy cleanup. 
but I just had a pound of ground beef here and that made four really good sized patties for us. And I'm just gonna pan fry them up on top of the stove tonight. I'm also one of those people who likes to wear gloves when they're handling raw meat. Just to handle it is one thing, but when I'm really gonna have my hands mixing in it, I like to wear gloves. You can see that was a uh, ground chuck, so there's plenty of grease in there. These were nice and juicy. When it was time to eat, I did add just a little bit more mayonnaise into my pasta salad. You know, you can always add more, but you can't take it away. So I always like to start on the lesser side of things. But when I served it, I just sprinkled a little bit more paprika on there. Of course, I like, you know, a little bit of burger with my lettuce. I like tons of lettuce and onion on mine. And we had these delicious brown sugar bushes baked beans on the side. I don't think I can have a burger without baked beans. So now we're moving on to another night. And I'm starting with a pound of ground beef. And I'm going to make one of the bubble up bakes. This is supposed to be a pizza bubble up bake. When I'm browning my ground beef to drain the grease, I always like to take aluminum foil and line a bowl with it. And then I'll put my strainer in there and I can very easily put my ground beef in that strainer and drain off all the grease like that. That's just another little tip. If you're new here, you may not have seen me do that before, but I just like to throw little things like that in. Um, I don't remember who showed me that. It might have been my daughter. But I am taking six of the grand biscuits, not the flaky layers, but just the regular ones, and I'm just cutting them into eighths. I do find that the smaller the pieces, the easier it is to get them all mixed and coated um, with your mixture and this always calls for six biscuits so I always have two left over and I just bake them up along the side but I do take all the little biscuit pieces and pull them apart and put them in a big bowl and I did not have pizza sauce but I did have this jar of just ragu traditional sauce so that is what I put in mine of course, as always, I will have the original recipe written down below or a link to it. Then I put in Italian seasoning. And then I'm going to add my ground beef in. Now, if you like ground Italian sausage, that is what it really suggests to use in here but that's just not really our taste and I didn't have any of that on hand and this was just all stuff that I had you're just gonna mix all that up really good and I think I probably could have put those extra two biscuits in there I don't think it would have hurt a bit but I'm taking a 9 by 13 casserole dish spraying it with nonstick spray then you're just gonna turn that whole mixture out into here now you can also put pepperonis down in this I am just not a fan of pepperonis except like as a topping so I did put pepperonis just on the top of about half of this and then gonna to top it with some mozzarella cheese And I did go to put it in the oven, and then I remembered, oh, I was going to put pepperonis on part of that for my husband. <laughs> so I had to pull it back out and do that real quick. But you are going to bake it for 25 to 30 minutes in a 375 degree oven. And again, this is just one pound of meat, a small 15 ounce jar of sauce, and a couple of cups of mozzarella cheese. 
and a, you know, a can of biscuits. This was so good. I will say this about mine. It was delicious, but mine tastes more like a lasagna without all the good ricotta cheese in it. And I think it's because my sauce I used was just a regular pasta sauce and not a pizza sauce per se. And it never fails when you're filming. Always beware with your salad dressings. I don't know why they put those big holes like that in the salad dressings. But this was very good. To me, it was like a super quick and easy lasagna, but everybody liked it. I've not had one of these bubble up bakes yet that we just didn't love. And that salad tasted wonderful and delicious as well. Now I decided that I was gonna make Salisbury steak. I had everything I needed to make that. It's one of my husband's favorite. To start out, I'm gonna make the sauce and I'm gonna make about a cup and a half of beef broth. I keep those little chicken bouillon packs just to make broth out of. And I'm putting in a pack of brown gravy mix and this is just right under an ounce size. You would put this with about a cup of water if you were just making the gravy. Then you're going to add in about two tablespoons of ketchup. About a teaspoon of Dijon mustard. And then I only put in just about a teaspoon full of parsley flakes because I just did not have as much of meat as what the recipe calls for. But you're going to mix all that together and that will be your sauce. And this is going in the crock pot. I don't remember if I said that, but this crock pot Salisbury steak is my husband's favorite. So for your meat mixture, I just again have about a pound of ground beef here. Into that, I'm going to use some of these dried chopped onions instead of chopping up an onion to put in here. I'm going to put in about a third a cup of panko breadcrumbs, some salt and pepper. Then I'm going to add in about a teaspoonful of minced up garlic. Finish it off with just a couple of tablespoons of milk and an egg yolk. It is nice to keep a full pantry and a full freezer so on these days or these weeks when you just don't feel good, you don't have a plan, I knew I could get away with that. I did not have to go in here and plan out anything elaborate for the even the next couple weeks. I had anything that I could want on hand. I knew I could go in there and put something together whenever I felt like it. So I do like to brown mine if I have time. I think that just gives it a really good flavor. So I've got about four patties over there browning up in a skillet. And then I have sprayed my crock pot with some nonstick spray. And I'm just slicing up maybe a half or a quarter of a sweet onion and putting down in the bottom in my crock pot. I'm just going to give these hamburger patties just a nice little brown on each side. Not trying to cook them through, just trying to get a little brownness on them and a little bit of that flavor extracted. Then I'm going to set them right down in the crock pot on top of those onions. And of course, I'm going to put any of my leftover drippings right down in there too. Don't want to lose any of that flavor. Then you're going to come back over it with the gravy mixture. 
that you have mixed up. Pour that over the top. Cook it on low for four hours. I have made this so many times and I have never not had it turn out delicious. I'm just throwing together some canned green beans and someone had asked what I do with my green beans. Super easy. I just put them in with the water and everything and I put salt, pepper, about a tablespoon or so of butter depending on how many cans I'm making and I'll either put in some bacon grease if I don't have any, I'll just pour in a little bit of plain old vegetable oil. I turn them up good and high and get them to cooking real hard. Then I just cut them down and let them simmer until dinner's ready. And I'm also going to make some buttery brown sugar glazed carrots. This is also just something that's super easy. Just throw in a can of carrots with their juice and all. A tablespoon of butter and brown sugar. I do the same thing with that. I cut it up and get it to cooking pretty hard. Then I turn it down to simmer and I let it cook until supper's ready. Once my Salisbury steaks were ready, I checked on my gravy there and it wasn't quite as thick as I like. So I just pulled out my little hamburger steaks. And I made a slurry out of flour and water and I just mixed that up real good, poured it down into that gravy and stirred it in. Then I cut it up on high and put the lid on it and I just let it set for maybe 10 or 15 minutes. Come back in, stirred it up. Gravy was nice and thick so I just put my steaks back down in there and covered them up with that gravy and we were ready to go. And I have really been on an instant mashed potato kick here recently. I don't even remember the last time that I have made real mashed potatoes. <laughs> but that's okay. We all got fed and it tasted delicious. I've made this Salisbury steak a number of times and I have never not had this turn out. I think it is so interesting how you can take hamburger meat and make so many different flavors out of it. The flavors of the hamburger patties are completely different than the flavors whenever you put the Salisbury steak together with those seasonings and those ingredients. And then the lasagna or pizza bake. All of these things, so many good and easy things to do with ground beef. Now it dawned on me, I did not show you what we had for our little New Year's celebration. So I had the footage, but I just hadn't shown it to you yet. So I made some of my infamous crock pot grape jelly meatballs. <laughs> Y'all remember I'm bad to let these sit too long, but I had about a 15 to 18 ounce jar of grape jelly. Just put that whole thing down in the crock pot. And this is one of the things that I do like to use a crock pot liner on because, you know, it's just easy to throw it away. I had this huge thing of barbecue sauce so what I did was just squirt that grape jelly bottle back full because you just want equal parts of barbecue sauce and grape jelly. I just kind of mix that together and then I'll take a bag of frozen homestyle meatballs. I always use homestyle. I'm just not a fan of the Italian ones and it sure it would not be good with this mixture over it but I just put those frozen meatballs down in here and this was about a 26 ounce bag of these. I just try to stir them around and get them covered up a little bit. Then I put my crock pot on high, but just for about two hours. Now I'm gonna make some little crescent sandwiches that my daughter makes all the time. And in each little triangle, you're just going to put you a little squirt of Dijon mustard. Spread it out just a little bit. And you can use any kind of cheese, meat, whatever you want to put in here. But this is what I had on hand. I used pepper jack. 
and I just take one slice of cheese and kind of fold it in half because it does not take much to fill up these little crescent rolls. And pepper jack has such a good flavor too. And then I just had some oven roasted turkey breast deli meat. Just put a little bit of that in each of your little crescent rolls. Then you're just going to roll them up. Doesn't have to be perfect. They're going to bake up nice no matter how you have them rolled up. If a little bit of cheese or meat's hanging out, that is okay. That just makes them look pretty in my opinion. And we did not have this New Year's Eve. I don't remember what happened if we had eaten late or what, but we were just not ready for party food. But we did eat this New Year's Day that night. We partied a day late. <laughs> I could not remember the exact spices and all that my daughter put on hers and um, I just kind of winked it on these but I just take a little bit of butter just a few little tablespoons full that I've melted down and I brushed very lightly I didn't use a whole lot of butter on this because I did want my crescents to bake up really nice and big And I just used some chopped onions on the top. And a little bit of Italian seasoning. I have found you a pin that I'll link below that has some different variations on this same recipe. I was ready for some veggies and dip. So I had a red bell pepper that I was just cutting up for us to have, along with some carrots, cucumbers, and broccoli. And here come our little crescent sandwiches. Those were so yummy. The seasonings taste so good. And just that little bit of butter that you put over the top of them gives them such a good flavor and helps them just get golden brown. So here was our little spread that we had. Had a little bit of cheese ball still left over too, along with a bunch of veggies and dip. Had our little turkey crescent sandwiches, some more of that Velveeta Rotel dip, and our meatballs. I was so proud, I did not scorch them, not one bit this time. <laughs> and those are the little Oreo balls. Had to show you the inside how nice they look they're just perfectly done this tastes so good and such a festive little treat just to get together guys i appreciate you being so patient while i was sick last week thank you so much for your prayers i really felt each and every one of them i hope you'll enjoy these meals if it's given you some inspiration, some new things you've not tried, or maybe reminded you of something you hadn't had in a while. They all tasted delicious. I can't tell you how good and fresh these salads were tasting to me this week. It was nice to have some food that didn't have the distinct taste of Hall's cough drops in it for now. 
I hope that this week's video has found each of you doing well and enjoying this new year. Again, I appreciate you so much for watching. So until I see you next time, I send you love from my kitchen.